Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to stop resenting your parents so that you can find peace. And I'm gonna be walking you through a five step sort of system or way for you to start this process on your own. For all of the best advice, guidance, and support, check out my YouTube channel. I'm here every Thursday. If you don't know me, I'm Tess Brigham, licensed psychotherapist and board certified coach. And I've been working with people for over 15 years and I've dedicated the last decade to working with young adults just like yourself. So let's dive in. I first want to start off by saying that, you know, today I'm going to be talking in real generalities, right? And so I want to acknowledge that if you are someone who has had, um, you know, uh, very serious abuse by your parents, anything that is um, sexual abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, anything like that, and you've, you have not worked out this issue, YouTube is not the place, is not always the best place or should be the only place. I am saying this as a mental health professional, go seek help. And um, that is absolutely positively the first thing that you should be doing. So please, I just wanna make that real quick thing right now because this is a very serious topic, which is for some people, they have real resentment towards their parents for things, for very serious things that have happened. And that you should not be walking through alone. You need to walk through with a professional. All right. So today I'm really talking about, you know, your parents. There were good parts about them. There were not so great parts about them. But there are certain things about your relationship with your parents that are kind of sticking with you. You feel like, I can't get over my issues with men because of my issues with my dad. Or, you know, my mom was so tough. And while she's not a blown out narcissist, she's got a lot of narcissistic traits. And I got to figure out how to get through that with her. And so before we get started, I really want to acknowledge that I'm a parent myself. And I will tell you that being a parent is hard. It is rough. And it wasn't until I became a parent myself that I really kind of understood my own parents because it made me really realize like, oh, wow, you really have no idea what you're doing. So I'm not saying this as a way of, of whatever mistakes your parents made, any hurts or things that have happened in the past. I'm not excusing that behavior. Absolutely not. But what I'm saying is, is that it's really, really important for you to be able to recognize that your parents, they're human and they make mistakes, they make foibles, they make really big giant mistakes that they have no idea the impact on a kid's life. And so in order to walk through or be able to stop resenting your parents is you do have to see them as human and that they are, um, they are just like you, human beings going through life, still growing, still changing, and still trying to figure out who they are, which is what we're all trying to do. So if you feel like you're in a place right now where you're like, you know what, I got to move past this. I want to stop resenting my parents. Then step one is, is really about acknowledging how you feel. It's really easy to be like, well, my parents were nice. They put me through college. You know, they never did anything wrong. So, you know, I shouldn't resent them or I shouldn't be mean or mad or I shouldn't have feelings about the, them doing this or that. And I understand that one well, which is it's real easy to compare yourself to someone else who had a really hard childhood and say, I don't, I don't have the right to complain. But the thing is, is that you're watching this video, you're here for a reason. It's because you kind of feel like there's something blocking me in my life. And a lot of times it's unresolved resentment that we feel towards our parents and from the past that keeps us stuck. So I talk about this all the time, which is it always starts with you being aware of your own thoughts and feelings and acknowledging them. You know, and if you just start there and just do that, that is a great first step. It's just about learning to acknowledge the feelings, not bottling it up, not holding it in and any of those things. It's about being able to say, you know what? This is what happened to me. This was my experience of this. And this is how I feel. Because the other piece of this is, is that sometimes parents have different versions of events. And what's really important is while your parent might have one version, you have yours. So it's really important that you respect your version of events. That is your story, your truth, right? So number two is I highly recommend when clients come to me for this to go talk to their parents. Now, every parent's different. 
I always ask, do you feel like your parents could receive you? You know, do you feel like if you went to your parents and had the conversation that they would be open to it and wanting to hear? And I think that for a lot of people, I think you'll be surprised, depending on the age of your parents, people get me people mellow as they get older and people start to take more stock of their lives. And I know that a lot of times, maybe something that you, uh, when your parent was in their 30s or 40s, they wouldn't be able to hear or understand, they could probably hear maybe in their 60s or 70s. So talk to your parent about it and, and be able to go to them with the I statements of, this is how I felt, this was my experience, and this is it. And see if you can have a conversation with them. If you feel like you cannot have a conversation with your parents or you feel like, you know, I don't know if I could handle my parents not wanting to have this conversation with me, then the second option is to write it all out in a letter. Say everything that you wanna to say to mom or to dad or to both of them together. And if you feel like they can't take it, then put it in a bottle and throw it out into the ocean and say, okay, universe, there you go. I've said my piece. Because it is really important that not only that step one, you acknowledge your feelings, but then step two, you're able to express your feelings. And sometimes you, you don't have to tell the other person who hurt you that they hurt you. Sometimes it's good enough to be able to acknowledge it on paper, write it out and cast it out into the world. So number three is, now, depending on your parents, so some parents, they can really receive the, um, you know, they can receive you, they're there, and, it, and it's an amazing experience if it deepens the relationship. But number three is for those of you who are like, oh, I don't know if it's going to really deepen the relationship and my mom is still like a, a raging narcissist no matter what I say. So number three is boundaries having boundaries with your parents. One of the most awesome parts about being an adult is this. You don't have to put up with a lot of stuff that you used to have to put up with. When we're kids, we do whatever we need to do to survive in life. And that's really important. But when you become an adult, you get to decide, how am I gonna live my life? What am I gonna do? And part of that is being able to set boundaries with your parents and say, you know, hey, I have a better relationship with my mom when, you know, I only call her once a week or dad and I get along really well when I uh, limit our vacation time, you know, days together to two. You, it's all about setting boundaries for you to be able to have a better relationship. And what will happen is, is that as you're sort of setting these boundaries, you feel more in control of what you're doing and setting these boundaries you'll find that the resentment that you feel for the relationship will start to lessen because you're like, oh, this isn't, so, you know, this isn't as hard. I don't feel so angry. Number four is forgiveness. Forgiveness is huge. There's a man by the name of Fred Luskin. He's written several books. One of them is called Forgive for Good. If you're someone who struggles with forgiveness, I highly recommend that book. He is an expert in this topic. The thing about forgiveness is this, a lot of times we feel like we, you know, need to stay angry and need to stay mad and resentful towards somebody who has hurt us. And we think, and we, we have this assumption that if I stay really mad at you, then all my anger will through osmosis, you know, go on and hurt you, you know, you way across the country. You know, if I don't talk to you, if I, if I freeze you out, if I do all these things, it'll really, really hurt you. And the problem is, is that you can't control how someone else feels. So you can feel all this anger and resentment and that other person could be just fine. So, which actually makes the anger and resentment worse. So this is why we forgive for ourselves. We forgive other people not to let them off the hook, not to say their behavior was okay, but to allow ourselves to have some level of peace. We forgive for ourselves and it's really important. And number five is really refocus on yourself. You know, you've gone through this process of, you know, being able to release the resentment that you have for your parents. And now it's time for you to refocus on you. What do you need to do to heal? Our parents give us as much as they can when we're kids and now as an adult, it's really about us like filling in the little crevices and the squares and the parts of who we are and figuring that out. So refocus back on you. All right, so those are my five tools. 
Um, so if you are someone who struggles with boundaries, I did do another video called How to Set Boundaries and Stop People Pleasing. So check it out. I'll have a link below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and comment below and even better, share it with someone who you think would really appreciate this information. And if you like me and like what I've, I've had to say, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm here every single Thursday. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.